you again. Boom, right by back. Then later on, I waste my time. I'm not going to success in America. In his early attempts to become an international superstar, he wasn't ever so successful because the films uh, didn't really demonstrate the, the range of abilities in his performance that, uh, that he clearly has. I think he kind of assumed he would have that creativity behind the camera as well as in front of the camera, and he didn't. No producer, or at least the producer who worked with him on his first film, The Big Brawl, never watched any of his films earlier, didn't know who he was. So when Jackie uh, asked if he could go behind the camera and just check the camera angle, or um, we're going to do this fight scene, oh, I have a good idea, I'm going to do a somersault and then do a, a kick over here. No, no, Jackie, just walk. Just walk and walk off, that's all we want you to do. Jackie must have found it extremely frustrating yeah, in his gosh. early years of, of Hollywood because uh, you can just imagine the scenario of, of this unexperienced, non-martial artist director trying to tell him what to do. Uh, and I don't think there was any, I don't think there was any dialogue. I think it's just going, you know, I want you, I want you to shoot it like this. I want you to bounce off of this wall and, and do, do some of your Hong Kong fooey stuff. And then, you know, uh, you know, and he must have just yeah. been so like, no, you know, you, know, you, need, you, know, you need to, you, you don't understand, you need to do this. They didn't treat him like Jackie Chan, the star. I mean, he's God in Asia. And they didn't treat him well, and the movie didn't, didn't do well, so he had a very bad experience. He had a difficult time having a career in the United States, which is, like I said, what he always dreamed of having. His US debut misfired, not surprisingly. The Hollywood directors underused Jackie's martial arts and comic potential, instead concentrating on polishing his English dialogue, schoolboy error, of their part. In a minute. Right now, my English is 10 times better than before, but still no good. How can I? I'm like an ABC American-born Chinese, like Big Bro. The script doesn't fit. Nobody concentrate my action. Nobody, nobody concentrate my, my dialogue. They only concentrate my, my English. Coming up in part three, we see how after a decade back on home ground, Jackie finally cracked America and the world. Helped by two pale-faced superstars of the silent era. In the 80s, Jackie Chan's knockabout brand of kung fu was huge in Asia, but not exactly setting Hollywood alight. Yet those sporadic, ill-fated stateside trips did have an upside, exposing him to silent movie greats like Harold Lloyd and Buster Keaton. Honest, when I'm making my movie, I never see Buster Keaton in Harold Lloyd. Some press from uh, outside. You know what? You look like a Buster Keaton in Harold Lloyd. Who are they? I only know Charlie Chaplin. And the old day. Then they slowly sent me the, the video. Then I started looking. Wow. That's Buster Keaton. Oh, the things he's doing, almost like me. But he must have recognized something of what he had begun to do and had started to work for him in the, the work of these you know, great Americans. And I'm sure somewhere in there he realized that if he could tap into what worked for them, he, that would be a key to breaking the American market, which is something that he really wanted to do. Jackie Chan had to find another way of getting into the movies and not trying to emulate something that couldn't be emulated. And, and I think he'd done it perfectly in that he looked at his, you know, his heroes in the, the action sort of physical comedy like Keaton. He loves that slapstick and that cheeky grin and it just worked for him. All the comedy, humor, he, he never do a lot of, you know, funny face. He just do it by himself. The wind is not actually not that big. He just create all the wet floor. See, now he just do it by himself. Wet floor. And I've been learning these kind of things for him. And I use his idea and just create my own things together. That we use again, reuse again, that's all. Then I get the idea from rhythm, timing, use a lot of props. Maybe the, the guy give me a punch, boom, I just put in here. Then maybe 
Then you see the, the TV on, in, on, off, on, on, off, on, off. Maybe put it here. Boom. Why is it? Good. You know, that becoming an action sequence with comedy. That whole idea of using what's ever to hand is kind of really inventive, fluid, and completely anarchic kind of choreography, dance choreography. <laughs> That kind of skilled timing is extremely rare. He, in, today, there's very few people, um, especially actors, that can perform that kind of physical timing. It's, it's extremely hard to do. In Project A, Chan used these influences to break new ground for kung fu flicks with tightly choreographed martial arts, pratfalls, and stunts, even recreating the famous clock tower scene from Harold Lloyd's silent classic, Safety Last. He takes stuff and he doesn't copy it exactly. He takes it and adds to it. I think that's an essential part of his uh, childlike playfulness, his, his innocent improvisation, is that he can pick a subject uh, that somebody has used already, utilise it with his own style and, and, and make it more impressive and specifically Jackie Chan. <laughs> Harold Lloyd doesn't actually fall, Jackie Chan does fall through about three canopies and there's one shot and you see him going down and you see him literally land on no mats or nothing. Yes, what you're seeing was done for real. Ouch! It's like a cartoon. It's really like that moment where you run off the cliff and then you kind of look and you go, oh, I'm on a cliff. But the difference is, of course, you bounce back and punch Roadrunner in the face. I actually thought he was going to die. I'll be honest with you, I thought he was going to die. I thought, my God, no, no man on this earth could, could hang on to that and, and jump down. To hang from a clock, 40 foot up, fall through two different tiers of, of uh, lean-to... What do they call those? Things. Things. Those lean-to things, covered in fabric. I can't remember what they're called. Mm. That really annoy me. To, f to fall like that, 40 foot, go through, go through two of these screens and then hit the deck. And then get up, find you busted a bone and go back to the top to get another shot. You know, certifiable. And it's all real, you know. I mean, anyone who watches it may think it's fake, believe me. It was real. I was standing there watching it myself. Jackie is famous for, for even, even now, to some extent, doing all of his own stunts. And he, he, started, he started really as, a, as an action scene fight director. Um, that's really where he sort of made his name in, in, in Hong Kong film industry, before he became a director and before he started to take control of uh, his own projects as a director, star and fight director. Um, so he's very much uh, someone who's very hands-on in the martial arts sequences. In the process of building up his skills as, uh, as a director and editor, actor and, and martial artist, he sort of encompassed the body of people he could trust around him to do the, the wire work safely and to, to perform the hits and kicks and contact points that it takes years of practice to make real. I think that's why he's, 